I would like to present a bit my company, the company I'm working on is Materialize. It's a Belgium company, the head office is in Leuven, Belgium. Uh, the company is for now, as so far as I remember, 27 years old. And um, we, it was one of the oldest, it is one of the oldest uh, 3D printing companies in the world and currently one of the biggest 3D services providers worldwide but we are not only about 3d printing so the main we have three uh, main core competencies first is uh, 3d printing and uh, we use our skills to um, in industrial production in design and consumer market uh, here we, you have you see additive manufacturing services and i materialize i would like to point out this specifically because this is the service i'm working on um, this is a service for consumer markets, so it's simple, you can just go online, upload your model online, get an online price estimation and just order it like via eBay with PayPal and receive your printed part um, by um, via mail. Um, so uh, another um, Co competence is uh, software development and here in, in Kiev in Ukraine we have a development office um, where more than 300 people are working on um, additive manufacturing software to that is used in uh, for 3D printers for adjusting models for being produced and so on um, in, in particular you might have heard about the software magics uh, that is very popular in in 3D printing and uh, further on, as far as I remember, on Sunday you will have a, a training by my colleague uh, how to work in magics and how to make your model printable. Mm. And the third competence is um, engineering, mainly it's medical engineering and uh, we use our developed software to uh, process uh, 2D uh, data, meaning um, CT and MRI scans of the patients to create 3D models of their um, parts of their body to, that is used further on to plan operations. And this is very uh, important part of um, our company and uh, once again by one of other my colleague you will have a lecture on um, application of 3D printing in medical field. Today we will have a lecture on um, 3D printing technologies. Um, I will, will see uh, different ones. I will show you examples of the printed parts, uh, either printed, what, what we have here, I've brought everything, or um, in pictures. Also, we'll see some videos of the uh, production processes. They're quite short, but um, unfortunately here we don't have all the uh, version of technologies, so we cannot have a look at the printers, then videos will come in handy. Uh, and um, first, before we start with the production technologies, let's uh, decide with the um, terms. So we have a term of rapid prototyping, additive manufacturing and 3D printing. Uh, does anyone know what is the difference b between these three terms? Anyone? Good. Okay, then we'll, I will bring you the information. Uh, so um, rapid prototyping. Uh, once you design something, um, you have a concept in your mind and you need something to be uh, shown as a concept, as a prototype. So the first version. And um, Previously, it was quite difficult to produce even one part and it took a lot of time and this was uh, an obstacle in businesses. Uh, so that's how rapid, prototype, rapid prototyping uh, was invented. So it's a process of uh, making a quick prototype and uh, there are two main ways, the primary and secondary. Primary is when the model is printed layer by layer and secondary is when this printed model I is used as a master model to make a mold and then create several prototypes based on this mode. And uh, then we have additive manufacturing. So uh, previously to produce a part, uh, you had to spend a lot of time and effort um, to make it with the help of milling or machining. Uh, so you had the whole block of material and then you subtract all the unnecessary part to receive uh, a model. Um, so this is not only a uh, waste of time, but also a waste of material because everything that is not a part of this model in this block is just thrown away. Uh, and that's how edif additive manufacturing uh, was created. So it's uh, creating a model layer by layer. Uh, so no waste ma and almost no ma waste material is here. Um, and so um, 3D printing is a mm, synonym of additive manufacturing, so uh, it's mostly used for consumer markets and additive manufacturing is more than an uh, industrial term. Uh, 
Um, so how does 3D printing work? Um, as far as I know, if you've had some experience already with FDM technology. Uh, and so uh, this is just a quick look up. So you have a 3D file in your, on your computer. And once we have a 3D file, we have to convert it into um, machine language. Uh, so uh, the, as the model will be printed layer by layer, the file is uh, being separated by slices. Um, so as a result, we have a, a stack of slices. Um, and then uh, the model goes to the machine. And then it's, as well as it was uh, sliced, it is printed layer by layer, starting from the bottom layer, adding one on top of the other. And uh, at the end, we have a stack of slices printed. So you have a model uh, as a result. And we can see a small video. So mainly that's how it works. So and um, as you can see, we will start from the main technology, the laser sintering. And but before that, uh, we will see um, the have a look at the files. So uh, 3D files may be in various different um, uh, resolutions and uh, file formats, but um, the main file format that is being understood by the printers is uh, STL file format. So um, once you have a file, you will need to convert it to STL so that 3D printers understand what's going on. Uh, it's a triangulation language, so the surface of, of your model is being uh, separated by small triangles. The more triangles you have in your model, the smoother the, your surface is. Um, and how can we obtain the 3D files? First of all, you can, we can design it yourself. You can hire someone to design it. Uh, besides, you are, can um, download it. There are various uh, 3D model marketplaces, uh, such as uh, I don't know, Thingiverse or Ideas Worth Making is our project. So uh, you've already seen how it works. Um, the first uh, layer of uh, very fine powder is being spread on the printer by a roller. Uh, and then um, the first layer is being uh, cured by, by the laser. So um, the whole block of powder, so it's been spread layer by layer, and the whole powder that is in the machine is being heated to a very high temperature, uh, slightly below the melting point of the powder. And then uh, the la laser goes on the only on the areas where your model would be. And as, uh, as a matter of fact, the, uh, pow this powder is melted by this laser uh, and then layer by layer. So that's the process, the roller, the laser, then next, next um, um, roller. And so one by one, la the layers are being uh, put. And then you have a whole block of powder. And inside, you have your model. And you need to excavate it. Uh, we will can see it again on video. <laughs>
The best part of this technology is that you do not need support structures. The powder that is um, outside your model is, b is supporting your model. So uh, as a result, there is a very um, good freedom of designs, design and a lot of functional parts are possible to be produced. Uh, clips, uh, living hinges, interlocking parts, everything is possible with this technology. Um, also, uh, there are different materials and most of them are have good temperature resistance and uh, resistance to chemical products. Um, you can see different... So, like this, you have a ball within a ball structure. So something inside something else, you can yeah, pass it away. And um, this is mostly possible with this technology because no support is needed, so we don't have to support this snowflake inside. Um, also, in terms of uh, wall thickness, um, you can experiment with the wall thickness, and uh, if we talk about polyamide material, um, the thinner you go, the more flexible your material is. Of course, you have to uh, find the line because at some point it will break, but for example, here you have just a polyamide model, also passing, uh, and uh, it's quite stiff, but when you go thinner, the, uh, it becomes flexible, and that's more convenient in this case. Um, what else? It's, uh, the production is quite fast, so uh, the whole build is being printed in several hours, but then, so this whole block of powder is being, to, to being uh, uh, heated up to 180 degrees, so then you have to uh, put it away for the night so, for, so that it cools down and it's possible to uh, excavate the models and finish them. Um, also, um, it, the material is quite cost effective bef because you can um, put a lot of models in this whole build and uh, they can be quite close to each other. Uh, and uh, the mm, cons are so that the um, surface quality is quite rough because this is powder and it's being melted. You can see in the, on the models that there it's quite sandy surface. Uh, it can be polished. Polishing is done with the help of tumbling. Uh, this is a big round machine with a lot of uh, small smooth stones in it. Uh, the models are put into this machine with the, with the stones. Uh, water, water is being added and the machine is vibrating at high, high frequency and the models are uh, getting in touch with the stones and being polished like this. But unfortunately this is not suitable for delicate parts because they are being broken so only uh, solid and stiff parts can uh, be produced like this. Um, also, this technology has quite some risk of deformation. If this is um, a big flat part uh, or a box-like structure, because uh, once the mm, model cools down after print printing, uh, the uh, uh, the different parts of this model are being uh, cooling down with different speed, and as a result, the part is being is being deformed. So, if we have a a flat structure, it, it looks like this. So it, there is a click-clack effect and uh, normally we do not recommend to build big flat uh, models in this technology. Uh, there are different ways of finishing the parts. Um, first of all, I've already told you about polishing. Besides, they can be uh, painted. Painted in two ways. First of all, it's just spray painting as with the spray can as usual. And another one is dyeing. So uh, the models are being put into an enclave with the uh, impregnated, uh, being impregnated with the paint. Uh, you can take a look at this. These models were dyed. And um, what is better is that the uh, paint is not on the top of the model, on, on the surface, but it uh, goes inside the model for about 0.2 millimeters. So in case the model is being scratched a bit, uh, you cannot see the white scratch. It will be uh, with the same color. And uh, yeah, this is another uh, dyed model. And uh, this is quite nice finishing. I, I think you would enjoy it. The velvet finish. Um, so it's like f furry models, as we say. Um, how is it done? The first, first of all, the model is dyed in the color with the, this finishing. Uh, then it's being covered with the glue. 
and the uh, electricity goes through the model, so there is a um, static electricity, and then the small, uh, about one millimeter furs are being thrown at the model, and uh, in when this static electricity is being applied, they're all being attached to this model in a correct way, so uh, standing up, and as a result, you have a furry model. Uh, you will pass and see that it's quite popular with consumer markets, so you have, uh, you can make souvenirs with it and something like this. Um, okay, let's go to the materials then. Um, first of all is uh, polyamide, uh, concept null, so s here you see a uh, um, uh, Raspberry Pi case uh, with the uh, dyed red dyed model. Uh, the shoes are also made with the polyamide technology and uh, you have a, an art project. It was uh, dyed and then spray painted with the, uh, by the designer. Most of the examples that we'll see today are of, of the uh, consumer origin because they're the most fun to look at as far as I as I'm concerned, and uh, the most nice, but uh, of course the uh, technical parts are also possible with this technology, and after we've had a look on all the technologies, uh, we'll uh, take a small look at what fields uh, can 3D printing be used in, uh, and mainly what our company is doing. Um, then another material is um, alumide. This is aluminium with a, a slight uh, adding of, uh, uh, this is polyamide with adding alumide my aluminum power power powder sorry we have only one small example that's all we had but you can take a look also um, <coughs> uh, the why is it done the model is becomes more strong with this material compared to polyamide it's more stiff more temperature resistant but at the same uh, moment it's a bit more brittle so it doesn't bend that good that as uh, polyamide so it's more stiff um, also there are uh, some kind of uh, technical materials i don't have examples here but um, pagf is uh, glass filled uh, polyamide uh, the model becomes uh, significantly more strong uh, and uh, as it is not glass fiber but actually glass balls being added uh, the model is not that uh, stiff and not that breakable compared to glass filled materials with <coughs> filled with glass powder fiber sorry <laughs> next one Next one is rubber-like uh, TPU material. It's quite popular now. Uh, this is a flexible material. Mm, this model was also dyed. It can be dyed in different colors. Uh, naturally, is yellowish white. Uh, and uh, mm, this is one of the few uh, flexible materials. And I also have a video showing how flexible it actually is.
And another material in these technologies I would like to present is the, our recent development uh, is wood. So it, you can actually print in wood. Uh, I believe we would have some uh, questions with prices. And here I would like to comment that it depends on what application you're, you're going to. Uh, so who are you and where do you come? So for example, uh, at Materialize, we have different levels of services and different levels of production. Um, so there is a uh, industrial customers, big companies. For them, we have uh, you know, project management and this kind of things. Uh, and there, it would cost more. And but I will tell in, in my field. So it's a consumer market. So at our website, it would cost about thirty euro, not more, as far as I understand. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you have any questions in terms of action, don't hesitate to interrupt me and ask them. That would be the best way. Um, so wood material is. Uh, printed with the same laser sintering technology uh, but with a very fine granular uh, wood powder made of wood chips and mm, as a result the material is quite uh, porous and sandy as you can see these close, close up pictures uh, and um, it's not that strong but it's ecological it's one of the first ecological materials um, and uh, recently it was quite pro popular, so it's a recent material that we applied. Is it uh, possible to have it in different colors? Like uh, currently not, but we are working on it. Um, the next one is titanium. It's made with the same technology. Uh, it's called direct metal laser sintering. The melting point of titanium is very high. That's why, despite the fact that this is also being produced with the help of uh, metal powder, uh, the uh, uh, the supports here I need it, and so uh, once uh, we print models in titanium, the uh, supports are being generated and then being taken uh, off the model. Uh, here you can also see that there are two different finishings, uh, natural and polished. Polishing is also quite uh, difficult to be done for titanium, uh, and that's why uh, this is one of the most uh, costly materials in terms of 3D printing because the w very complicated technology of production. But still, it's possible to order these parts even for consumer market. So this ring, no, Polish, Polish ring would cost a lot. The uh, other models would be around uh, 200 euros for pair parts. So it's more or less for, for the people who are interesting. Um, yes, the next technology is stereolithography. Um, SLA technology, as you might know them. Um, the ba basic concept uh, is um, similar to uh, laser sintering, but here not powder is used, but, but liquid. So this is resin, uh, an epoxy, um, and it is UV sensitive. So uh, the first layer is spread again by the, by the roller. Uh, and uh, it is being uh, then cured by the UV uh, laser. Um, and Afterwards, again, layer by layer, but here, as, as you may understand, this is liquid. Uh, so if you don't have support structure, it will not hold in place. It will just float uh, in the liquid. That's why the supports are being generated. Um, and uh, afterwards, they are being finished. Um, so again, platform lowers into the tank of uh, resin, uh, laser goes, and again, layer by layer, it's done like this. Um, because, uh, as a matter of fact, if you have support structure, the uh, design is quite limited. Uh, but nevertheless, the surface quality is very good. It's, more, it's not that sandy, it's uh, more smooth. Uh, and as a result, you can have uh, very nice um, concept models, limited uh, design, limited uh, temperature resistance as well. So these models would not go above uh, 50, 70 degrees, after that they would melt. Um, but uh, a good finishing is possible, so these models are quite often chosen for uh, prototypes, for uh, photo shoots and so on. So we have several materials here. Uh, Protagon White um, is a, um, okay, uh, in terms of machines, um, this material uh, is very good because oh, you can produce huge models. Uh, the biggest printer is called Mammoth. It's, uh, it is a production of uh, our company. We've created this printer and it can print the models of uh, over two meters long.
And uh, so coming back to the materials, uh, different finishes are possible. Uh, here you can see the um, chrome, chrome plated, chroming uh, finishing. Also painting is possible and they are being painted is in professional painting booths. So it's not just a spray can, but different um, uh, levels of uh, smoothness um, is, uh, uh, are possible as well. Uh, and uh, next material is transparent resin. Um, so as you can see, this uh, upper part, the transparent one, is uh, this material. Uh, it is also possible to print these models on these mammoth machines, quite big, but in this case, uh, as the roller goes very fast and on a big uh, surface, uh, there are uh, small bubbles between the layer they get inside there. So um, if the transparent models could be printed on this big machine only in case the transparency is not of the primary importance for you, but if you need really actually a uh, transparent model, uh, they are being printed normally on smaller machines. Uh, and uh, they can be just varnished with the uh, transparent varnish and then they're um, transparent but uh, they all can also be translucent like this one so I can pass this is my presence so be careful <laughs> uh, this lamp is uh, produced with uh, transparent resin and then once we add pigment to this transparent varnish we can create different colors absolutely different uh, so uh, in terms of colors we have uh, RAL um, RAL um, um, modifications of the colors, so normally it's RLL and RAL and then four numbers. Uh, this is an indication, international indication of colors. So uh, normally you can just name the Ariel index and then you, you will have the color that you need. This is an e extreme material. Um, it's uh, similar to um, uh, Protagon, the white one, but it's gray and uh, it's a bit more, uh, more detailed. So you can print such kind of uh, very small detailed models, but the technology is the same. So as you remember, you need support structures. Uh, and as a result, there would be uh, quite difficult to finish this one. So our production team usually has a lot of problems with these small beams. So uh, part of our uh, customers are uh, modelers that produce uh, scale models of trains, as you can see, and uh, those they are really, really concerned with the uh, wall thickness because uh, if the uh, this part of the window on, on a real train is with this thickness, then scaling is very important for them. So they are not ready to make this thicker to make sure that they're not broken. Uh, so normally it takes quite a lot of time to remove supports from such uh, models. Um, and they are removed just like with a knife. Um, and so it's, it's quite time consuming um, part. And then we come to a, a quite well-known technology. Uh, I believe you already have heard of it and used it, but uh, uh, there is a bit of difference between the um, uh, FDM used in home printers and uh, industrial materials. Um, so the principle is the same. You have a plastic filament that is uh, being melted in the nozzle uh, and being spread over the area where you need your model to be built. Uh, but Maybe someone would guess what could be the difference be between industrial and uh, home printers. The difference is that here we have two types of materials. Uh, this is actually the plastic that is used to build the model and the support material. So uh, in terms of uh, FDM, industrial grade uh, printers, uh, the, uh, there are a lot more possibilities because you have support, uh, supports being built. And uh, what is a good part um, in actually ABS material that is being the most popular, one of the most popular, is that those, um, su this support material is water soluble. So you just, uh, after the model is being built, you just put it into a, uh, water with a special soap and within several hours, the, the support such as dissolving and you have your model. And uh, as this is quite simple, the uh, freedom of design is possible. 
Um, also, the, m the materials that are used are quite, quite uh, strong. So this, mo mm, this uh, technique is used to for functional models. It's actually 80% features of the usual ABS material that is used in injection molding, for, for example, so in uh, traditional production. Uh, these models are quite similar to uh, 3D printed models, quite similar to regular models. Uh, the materials are temperature resistant. Uh, uh, it is possible to print food safe material. Food safety is quite a difficult question in 3D printing because uh, normally the uh, materials are not food safe or even if they are, the finishing is not food safe as it is. So uh, if FDM material could be food safe. Uh, polyamide, uh, a little bit if uh, all the conditions are being uh, held in place and uh, so on. Also the FDM material is good for gluing uh, and um, but the surface as you may know is are quite rough uh, and here I have uh, a number of uh, materials uh, industrial FDM materials you can pass them and I will tell a, bit, a little bit more, about more about them um, but first I guess we would see another video Next one. So functional models are possible. Here um, a GPS uh, device was scanned and then uh, a customer has designed a um, um, custom holder for this um, GPS device and for his bike. Um, but there are also technical materials, um, industrial ones, which are very important because they've uh, given us the way to the airspace uh, field because um, um, several of the materials there, uh, mainly uh, polycarbonate and ultam, are uh, fire retardant grade. So um, these materials are possible to be used in aircraft. So we have a park of around uh, 40 or 40 machines with the, this technology. It's quite popular here. Uh, and um, with, uh, with the, uh, those other materials, I can see apart ABS. Uh, for the rest, the supports are not being uh, dissolved in, in the soap. So, and the uh, removing of the supports process are, is quite difficult. It takes a lot of time and effort as well. Um, so the and ultem was created as the material that is as stiff and fire retardant, but the uh, removing of support structures is not that difficult. Um, next technology is polyjet. Uh, this one is quite similar similar to stereolithography. This is also uh, curing resin with the uh, UV um, laser, uh, but the difference is that it is not being printed with the help of 
can see a video with the help of uh, in a tank of resin but a very very fine and thin uh, layer of liquid resin is being spread over the model and being cured in an instance so until it gets out of the model There are also two types of materials, the uh, material itself and the support structure. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, if uh, w once you, uh, the printing is finished, you have a, a model just like it is on your platform, so no need, no need for finishing. And since the, this layer of, uh, um, is being spread, that is being spread is very, very thin, the um, accuracy in uh, z-axis of the models uh, the accuracy in the axis is uh, quite good, so the models, uh, what the Polyjet technology is called uh, high detail resin in, on our website, so the uh, detailization of the models, especially in the axis, are quite good. Um, and, uh, but there are several materials, uh, yeah, next slide, this one is um, the mm, high detail re uh, resin or uh, in technical rates called Vero White. But there are other materials. Uh, for example, in this technology, it's possible to print multicolor models. So uh, different kind of resin is being with different colors is are being spread over the model. Uh, also, uh, it is possible to print uh, transparent models with this technology. The material is, co is called full cure and uh, flexible, partly flexible uh, materials are possible, uh, Tango Black and Tango Plus materials, but uh, they are not that flexible as the rubber like that you've seen, the TPU material, because um, unlike those materials, if you try to tear it, it just tears, it's not, uh, it's, it's bending, but it's quite fragile. Um, so the techno uh, as, um, coming back to the Polyjet technology, the, the models uh, are of good quality if they are quite small, so we would do not recommend to print the models over 10 centimeters in each direction. Uh, and uh, then we come to another technology, mm, powder and binder based 3D printing. Uh, there are quite some materials that are being built with this technology. Uh, the principle is that um, you have, again, powder, but then it's not being cured with a uh, laser, but it's being glued. So that was a question with in terms of wood. So in this technology, it, it's the, the powder is actually glued. Um, and there are various um, materials uh, used in this technology. Um, the first one, uh, so as, yeah, as you can see, the, uh, the, glue, the, the glue goes out of the nozzle. Yeah. And the first one I would like to show you is multicolor material. Uh, this is an organic powder, a sandstone, um, that is being printed in colors, so uh, because of the uh, glue of different colors. Um, we can again see a video of how, how is it done. The next technology, I would say, uh, is printing in metals. So this technology, it, in this technology, it is possible to print uh, models in metals. Um, but once we get the model out of the printer, um, it is, again, very fragile. We call it the green state. And afterwards, the models are being um, cured and fired. And uh, depending on the technology, first we will see uh, the video on uh, stainless steel production. Uh, 
Uh, the model is being infused with bronze. That ma it makes it quite strong. And um, as well, this is one of the cheapest 3D printed ma uh, metals. Um, it's quite affordable. Mm, so this has a few examples of how stainless steel models look like. Uh, and the next one is high detail stainless steel. This one uh, is also quite popular uh, because in, in terms of regular stainless steel, the uh, models are still quite fragile because it is powder being uh, connected together. And uh, as a result, the, the walls should be at least three, three millimeters thick. Uh, which is not always uh, good for uh, designers because they want to produce more detailed parts. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, high detail stainless steel comes in handy, but uh, this is similar technology. Uh, but again, the models need to be uh, in regular stainless steel, they are being infused with bronze. Here they are being fired, and as a result, they become, mo become more stronger. Um, and um, But they are very, very detailed. The walls of around 0 0.5, 0 0.7 millimeters wall thickness is possible, which is quite good. But the size is quite small, so you can print models only up to four centimeters. So they are quite small. They are, s they are used for um, jewelry, for uh, small parts, uh, keychains, uh, some kind of uh, board game pieces like this one. So something like this. Next one, Next one is ceramics. So it is also possible to 3D print in ceramics. Uh, here, the same technology as for multicolor is used. So actually, even the same machines, but the powder is different. This is a ceramic powder uh, that is being also glued. Uh, but there are several steps in it. First, the, we have a, a green state model again that is being excavated from the printer. It is very, very fragile. Uh, it is being uh, pre-glazed. So uh, uh, it's being fired in an oven, then pre-glazed then again fired, then the uh, color glazing is, ap is applied, and then the model is fired for the third time, so quite long uh, production period. But as a result, you have a model that is uh, food safe. So the model is actually the same as regular ceramics that we buy in a shop, uh, but uh, different designs are possible in this case. The design room rules are quite strict because if the model walls are too thick, uh, the model cracks during firing. If the models walls are too thin, um, the walls are being broken. So uh, again, the in terms of uh, detailization, the glazing uh, takes away most of the details because it, when while it's, it covers the model, uh, but still, uh, it's uh, quite uh, new technology and very unusual that we have uh, food safe mat uh, material here and you can actually 3D print in ceramics. Thank you. Next one. Here are quite some examples of uh, ceramics. Uh, also, different colors are possible in ceramics as well. Um, and we come to the uh, last technology I have for you for today. It's uh, you know, casting lost wax. So as you know, the regular process of casting that you make a, a model uh, and then you make a mold of it and cast inside its model. Uh, the similar technology is used, but uh, in this case, the model is the uh, master model is being printed in 3D. Uh, the technology is the same as stereolithography, but the uh, material that is being printed is wax. Uh, so uh, first the wax model is being printed, first step is the wax model, then with a very fine plaster we make a mold, so outside of the uh, model. Uh, then um, when the model is being heated, uh, the wax evaporates uh, and we have a, just a mold. Uh, and then inside the, mm, the material is being poured. Uh, so mostly they are metals and, and they are um, precious materials. Um, and uh, after we uh, the model cool, cools down, the um, uh, the mold is being broken, and the uh, sprue is being cut off, and then the model is being finished, polished, uh, whatever. So we have several materials that we are using in this technology. First, first one is silver. Uh, it is possible in uh, several um, several finish uh, different finishings. Um, then it's gold. Again, uh, for silver, there are um, satin finishing, uh, high gloss, and uh, uh, the third one. 
setting gloss, high gloss, and sandblasted. Uh, then gold, gold is possible in 14 and 18 karat gold, white, rose, and yellow. Uh, here, this one, as far as I remember, is rose one. Um, next one. Uh, next one is brass. Brass is quite popular because uh, it is uh, comparatively cheap. So you have a gold-plated model that looks actually like gold, but is uh, significantly cheaper. So for example, this ring would cost about 20, 25 euro. Um, and they're also possible in different finishing. They can be um, uh, gold-plated like this and polished to look like gold. They're, um, they're PU-coated, so uh, more like uh, antique look in it. And then they're pos possible color plating, so they're uh, covered with, um, plated with metals of different color, and this one is also uh, quite popular. Uh, and there are, of course, other materials that are not used in materialized, but I believe you would know that the a lot of different ways that are uh, currently used in 3D printing. Uh, printing in chocolate, printing in uh, dough, and uh, so all of these pictures I've taken on a 3D print show in London previous year, um, and um, there there were quite a lot of uh, different uh, consumer printers. Uh, and uh, this one is, was also quite interesting. This is uh, printer is printing in sole with the um, seeds inside so afterwards you have uh, um, some kind of figure printed in this sole and then the grass is being raised from from this one so we'll talk a little bit about the um, fields of application of 3d printing and some uh, specific terms of printability of the models for plastics the bigger models can be printed in uh, paintable resin on these mammoth machines uh, the models over uh, two meters long uh, and for um, an ABS also quite popular because uh, the models over uh, 90 centimeters could be printed. Um, the smaller models uh, would be in uh, high detail resin. Again, as I said, no more than uh, 100 millimeters, so 10 centimeters. Uh, and um, then in terms of metals, next slide. The biggest one are possible in stainless steel. Again, the models of around one meter long are possible. Uh, would cost a fortune, but uh, technically it is possible. Um, models in ceramics are um, 30 centimeters, not more, but, but again, there are a lot of limitations in terms of wall thickness. And what else? That's it for the print sizes. Next one. And then we'll come to fields of application of 3D printing. Um, so the first one would be the medical one. I would not stop for long here because you will have a whole lecture on this topic or by my colleague. Uh, and just what I would like to say is that uh, with the help of scanning it's possible to get quite uh, um, precise data and afterwards uh, it is possible to create models that perfectly fit the patient. Uh, here on the top you can see uh, custom hearing aid devices. Uh, they are produced by our company in cooperation with uh, company Fonag that, that are doing the actual uh, um, uh, devices for hearing aids. So uh, here the, um, the form of the ear of the patient is uh, taken off by scanning or uh, and then the model is being printed so the the hearing aid perfectly fits the ear and it's very very convenient uh, also uh, custom implants are possible to be designed uh, and we are design, designing and producing both implants and the um, guides that are used um, in during operations that uh, are very, very useful because uh, during the operation the uh, doctor who is doing the operation had this guide and the whole uh, operation being planned in our software so it's uh, very easy to make this operation it becomes with significantly less risks and uh, significantly shorter so previously those operations could take six to eight hours now it's done within 30 minutes so it's a uh, very important part of our of, uh, of medical field also automotive uh, again we have a um, mammoth machines that could print big models. That's why it's quite popular to uh, produce uh, parts for uh, concept cars. Uh, we are working is in with a lot of very famous uh, 
producers of cars, uh, um, Jaguar, Land Rover, uh, Audi, and different others. Uh, so what is what can be produced? The most of all, these are the those uh, panels that are used inside and the bumpers um, that are custom shape for new concept cars. Uh, next one. Yes, uh, as I've already mentioned, the airspace uh, technology, because in, uh, in FDM technology it is possible to build um, fire retardants and uh, heat resistant parts, uh, and they are quite strong and durable. Uh, and we have all the certifications in, in terms of this fire resistance. It is possible to use 3D printed parts uh, in uh, airspace and even on, on the, uh, in space on the uh, spaceships. Uh, also, this, uh, if you have a solid design, uh, it is possible in our software to trematic to make the part like this. Uh, how do you think what would be the reason to make the, the part like this instead of solid one? Weight, yes. So uh, on aircraft, uh, each inch of the material counts, and the uh, light, the more lightweighted the model is, the better it is. So it's possible to build such parts that are still quite strong. And this is one another plus of using our technology in the airspace. And of course, art, art and history. Um, so here you can see a dress for uh, Madame Butterfly uh, opera. Uh, that was printed in rubber-like material that we've seen. And there you can see the uh, replica of uh, King Tut's mummy. We can take a look at the video uh, of this project.
that was um, <coughs> sort of historical uh, popular application of um, 3D printing. Next one will be fashion. Uh, currently, it's very, very popular to use 3D printing in fashion. It is used for producing jewelry and not only the metal parts in terms of lost wax casting, but also the uh, plastic parts, as you can see in picture one, um, because the uh, dyeing could give quite vivid colors. Um, as well, the dresses are being printed in polyamide and in rubber-like. Uh, on the bottom you can see the uh, spider dress by uh, a Belgium designer. Uh, it was showcased at our Materialized World Conference uh, this year. Uh, the principle is that you have this uh, spider, uh, I don't know, legs, I believe. But um, once it has a mechanism, so they are moving and um, the also there is a once someone goes near the person, so inter in enters her comfort zone, the f spider uh, legs are being spread out so that someone could get away. Uh, and uh, also, it is currently quite uh, popular to use uh, 3D printing for printing shoes. Uh, mainly, it's u u polyamide is used. It's quite durable for this application. Uh, and as well, the accessories such as uh, um, glasses like here and so on so yes uh, that's the end of the presentation first of all if you have any questions on what we've discussed for this moment no if you don't have questions I would have questions for you of course uh, otherwise it wouldn't be studying um, so let's talk about um, making the models hollow so what would be a reason to make the model hollow? So there is a solid part, okay. We have a, a solid part. Sorry, I'm very, very bad at drawing. S that's why we have some crooked parts like this. It's solid, there is nothing inside, and then we can make the model hollow. So inside is not filled. Um, what would be the reason to do this? Sorry? Economy of yes. What, what else? Wait. Wait. Okay. Um, then we'll see what would be the result if we just print the model hollow in different technologies. Uh, if we print the model hollow in, in um, laser centering, what would be the result? So just like this with nothing inside, what would be inside? Powder. powder. powder the un unbind powder. So uh, there is no... Uh, material economy in this case, correct? Uh, but there are still uh, quite a lot of uh, reasons to do this in polyamide, even if there is no uh, powder inside. If there if the powder stays inside. First of all, uh, if the model is printed solid in, um, with the help of laser sintering, namely in polyamide, um, the laser goes uh, all the way through the model, and as a result, the model is being overheated. And if the model is overheated in polyamide, it may deform and uh, the powder becomes yellow instead of white. Um, so normally uh, we recommend, even if you need a, a solid part, uh, this not, uh, we would recommend to make it hollow and just leave the powder inside it. Uh, but the model will have better surface quality, it would have better color, just white instead of yellowish. Uh, and it will not be that heavy. Um, as a result, and of course, we will um, economize the time spent on producing the part uh, and energy, of course. Uh, okay, next, if uh, we print this kind of uh, solid model, uh, hollow model in uh, stereolithography, what would be inside? Photopolymer. Yes, so the, the resin, yes, the resin would stay inside, but what else will be inside? Okay. We have a, a bit, yes. Uh, then we start printing the model. We print the bottom like this. Then we start building, so, no, like this. It goes. And then we have, need to, to yes, yes. So once we start building this, it just floats down side. That's why once we have solid walls here and here, here, everything will be filled with support structures so that when we start building the top, it doesn't sink. So the model will be filled inside with liquid 
and the support structures. And what would we need to do is we will need to foresee an escape hole somewhere in here or in here. The more the better, but one would be enough. Uh, so that after we produce the part, we can take, get, get the resin out of the part. Because if it stays inside, it spoils models and with the model and after some time the model would ruin. Uh, so this is uh, important and each time when we have such a design we make an escape hole, uh, get the resin out of there and then co close the escape hole. Uh, but the support structure stays inside, it is not possible to remove it. Uh, if we print the model in protein white material for example, so it's not transparent, uh, we, that there is no problem, so no one sees the supports and it's okay. Uh, but if uh, what if we need to print model transparent, so the inside is visible, what would we need to do then? We will need part by part. Uh, no, another ideas. We need to see the supports made of different materials. The supports are soluble. Okay, but this would be a different technology, and in, in FDM technology, there are not transparent material. What we do in this case, we uh, before starting printing, we make the uh, we cut the model in halves, print two halves separately, uh, finish the inside so we have uh, we can reach the inside in this case, and then we glue the model together. Uh, the downside of this process is that the gluing line is always visible, so it's not possible to finish it like this, that way that it's the gluing line is not visible. But you have a good surface quality and the transparency is good, so depending on the application that you would like to do, that would be possible. Uh, then FDM technology, what would, be, what would happen if you have this one in FDM technology, what would be inside? support structures, correct. It is possible to leave the support structures there, so no problem in this. Uh, but if you need the inside, sometimes it's, it's important. For example, you uh, print a bowl and you need the, to pour something inside or whatever. Uh, we just need to make, if we're printing it in ABS material, uh, as you remember, the uh, model, the supports are water soluble, so you just need to make two escape holes. Uh, the downside that we would, would probably need to soak in this soap for several days so that all the inside supports are being sold. Uh, but still the inside would be clear and then we can just uh, close the escape holes if we need or, or just leave it like that if the customer needs it like that. Uh, for, the, for the lost wax casting. So we have a model, it's being printed inside the VAX model, there are support structures, and besides, it is not possible to cast model from the inside. So you just need to uh, reach the uh, inside to get the mold, to the plaster that is making the mold inside there. So it's not possible to make hollow models uh, with this technology. Um, with the metals, uh, there are always support structures, so we would need to uh, except stainless steel, yes, except stain regular stainless steel, there are no support structures. Uh, but again, the material in their green state is quite fragile. That's why big hollow models are not possible in this technology because they just collapse when in the green state. Okay, uh, what else in terms of hollowing? That might be it. And then I have another question for you. Uh, we would discuss the Print orientation. Uh, in which technology does print orientation matters? So we have yeah, a cup. Yes, again, I'm very good at, bad at drawing. We have a cup. We can print it like this. We can print it like this. We can print it like this. When does it matter? How do we print this model? Yes, support structure. So which technology? FDL, laser lithography. Okay, um, FDM, the support structures are mainly water solvable. If I use ABS, so it's less important. For stereolithography, it's always important because uh, if we print like this, we have supports here and here. If we print like this, the whole inside. And why does it important where the support structures are? Because we are removing them. What is the problem? 
Okay, waste material first, good point. Another one? Okay, when we remove them, we like uh, deform our surface. Yes, yes. Time is also important, yes. Uh, so, uh, economizing the material and removing the supports. So, once we remove the supports from, uh, from the, uh, here it would be inside, uh, there would stay little small dots from this where on the point where the support is touching the actual model um, they are mainly being sandpapered away so when i was uh, starting working as a support engineer i've spent uh, several weeks on a production in belgium sandpapering the models to understand how it really works uh, and it actually it's a lot of job so uh, they try to minimize the amount of the supports but we uh, if we choose whether uh, less supports or the surface that is important to be smoother, of course we choose uh, that maybe the supports are more, but they are attached in the areas that are not important for the customer. So if, for example, uh, the inside of the cup, if it's a decorative cup, is less important than the outside here. So here are less supports are used, but this surface would be sandpapered and so even if you make it in several grades with the finer and finer sandpapering, some, uh, it would be visible that the model was sandpapered. Uh, so if the uh, outside surface is more, more important, uh, it is also uh, chosen to print it like this, use more material, more time, but the inside would be uh, not that good as the outside and it's not that bad. Um, another one is, um, Okay, we have um, a customer who is a mm, train model designer. He has a train, so in, in cut in section, if cut in section, it looks like this, so train, okay. Um, and what he is doing, he is uh, printing this model in halves, like this. So the model is printed, um, as far as I remember, he prints it like this and like this, so two, two models, yes. Um, yes, what would be the reason? So here inside he has support structures, uh, here he could have also support structures inside. What would be the reason? Uh, no. But here the uh, the support structures are also not visible, they're also inside. Yeah, but it's hard to take out the support structures from the complete torch through the windows. But yeah, in, in this case, yeah, this one is not here, yeah? It's it's like opened from this side. So, okay, it's easier to, yeah, good point. But there is another point that uh, you might probably not see for the moment. Uh, no matter how uh, detailed Okay, w I have another question before I come to this. Uh, what, uh, mm, what matters in terms of resolution? What determines resolution of the print? The detailization of what you... The, the thickness of the layer and what else? Yes? Fraction of the powder. Fraction of the powder and the diameter of layer. Uh, yes, the material itself and what else? The thickness of the layer uh, of the laser, mm -hmm. so it, they are bo they both matter. The thickness of the layer and the laser that is curing the, but it's it's just in different sections, yes, of the model. Uh, so no matter how detailed your um, uh, technology is, uh, you will always see print layers on the printed model. Three D printed models almost always have visible layers, and even this one. Uh, when I was showing it at the beginning, uh, uh, it was said that uh, it almost looked like not 3D printed. But if you take a closer look here, you can then take a look there. Uh, there are printed layers visible. Uh, and they will also always be visible because this is part of the technology, printing model layer by layer. But the orientation uh, could make the layers more or less visible. And in this case, we have this stepping. Yes, and in actually, if the uh, surface is quite steep, 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 uh, 
the layers are more visible. So we, actually it goes like this. And when it goes here, the stepping becomes more and more, and these layers becomes quite vis become quite visible. You can see this on the, uh, on the lamp, on the print lamp, and also somewhere here it was. Yes, here on the bottom you can take a look. Um, so in, with this question, the, uh, the customer decide that uh, with this orientation lying like this, this stepping is less visible than with here. So that's why uh, he's printing it in different orientation. So he's cutting the model. First of all, he, uh, it's easier to reduce the support structures and the support structures are only on the inside. So the inside is not as important, but at the same time, the, uh, the, the stepping is not as visible. Mm, what else? Okay, uh, another, yes? Yes, yes. And, uh, is it better to glue parts or to print uh, the you know, mm -hmm. better? Uh, it depends on the application of your model. For this customer, this is better because afterwards he's painting the parts to make it look like a real train. And uh, in terms of paint, the gluing line, he's sandpapering it and it's not that visible. But in terms of uh, layer, layers uh, vi more visible, uh, it is possible to sandpaper them away as well. It's quite possible, but uh, the amount of work is more, first of all. And uh, second of all, the details are being lost. For example, it's on, on top of the, his train, there are some uh, tubes and something like this. And if you sandpaper them, you just sandpaper them away just like your uh, layers. That's why it uh, more, has more sense to do it like this. Um, OK, another question in terms of SLA and um, orientation of your models. Um, what, again, with the example of the cup. Uh, as you remember, we uh, have a tank of liquid. The model are being uh, put down there layer by layer. And in the, at the end of the print, we have all the models inside this tank. And then the platform is being raised again. Uh, what would be the difference if we printed the model, the cup like this and like this after the platform is being raised? Yes, here there is no liquid. Here we have all the uh, excess resin inside this cup. Uh, this is called trapped volume and uh, we have a special, um, I don't know how is it called, it's um, a part of the software that uh, makes automatic uh, builds. So we have all of the files, all of the models in Magix and uh, then we can uh, just automatically fit all the models within the build so that they are fill, um, the more of the uh, space is filled with models so they are doing it like this previously it was so we are we were trying to improve this software and uh, the first task for this software would be uh, stack as much um, space as you as is possible and we could uh, find for example a, a bowl like a vase, and inside there he has stacked some models, so was no use. Uh, but uh, further and further, our um, algorithmic team is making new um, intellect for this um, software, and uh, he's recognizing such um, such situations. And as well, the software is taking into account if the trapped volumes would be present or not, and trying to orient it that way that they are not there are no trapped volumes. Uh, okay, what would be the um, okay the downside of the orientation if we print the model in SLS? So there is powder; it's self-supporting. What would be the difference? Uh, not not in okay, not in orientation. In orientation, it depends only on the details. So uh, the combination of layer thickness and thickness of the beam uh, in different orientations, the model would become more or less detailed a little bit. But sometimes it's quite important. Uh, and as for the uh, um, orientation of the parts in between each other, if what happens if we uh, print two parts? close to each other. Yes, so this area is very much 
uh, heated and this area is very much heated and all the block is heated of almost the melting point. So the powder that is should be unsintered here in between also gets so heated that it's, it's being uh, melted together and we have two connected models. So in, ca in this case, uh, we always need to foresee the uh, clearance between the parts. Uh, this also would be the, in case like um, the, in, in this technology, the uh, functional parts, as you remember, are possible. So you can print the models like this. So you have like, um, they are one into another and you have like a chain. Okay, I'm bad at drawing, sorry. <laughs> um, so, um, in this case, uh, orientation of the models one between another is very important. Uh, well, this is pretty, pretty much all for the time that we have. Uh, whether you have any questions, don't hesitate, yes? Uh, normally, if uh, everything goes okay with the build uh, and the settings, 0 0.5 millimeters is enough. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, but for technical parts, it might be uh, a difference. So we also have uh, the terms of accuracy. Uh, the minimum accuracy is plus minus 0 0.3 millimeters, but for many technical applications, this uh, size matters. So their, our ac accuracy is not sufficient for them. Okay, any other questions? If you have them, don't, don't hesitate to come to me in, after the lecture. I will answer them if you need. Thank you so much for your attention. I was glad to share my knowledge. Uh, I hope you, you will use them in your project. Thank you.